Good morning. Jesus sent his servant, Pope Benedict XVI, into the world to shepherd his flock. Today we offer thanksgiving for his service to the church. The celebrant for today's Mass is Bishop David Ricken. Concelebrating is Father John Girardi, and assisting at the Mass is Deacon Tom Mahoney. Our entrance chant is Where Charity and Love Prevail, number 468 in the music issue, number 468. God's begotten Son, let us love each other Good morning and welcome to this Mass of Thanksgiving for the Pontificate of Pope Benedict XVI, who was reigned as the Vicar of Christ and the successor to Peter for the past eight years. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we approach these sacred mysteries, let us pause and call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your providential design will that your church be built upon blessed Peter, whom you set over the other apostles, look with favor, we pray, on Benedict our Pope, and grant that he whom you have made Peter's successor may be for your people a visible source and foundation of unity in faith and of communion. 
we give thanks this day for his years of service and ask your blessing upon him. As we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. More torturous than all else is the human heart. Beyond remedy, who can understand it? I, the Lord, alone probe the mind and test the heart to reward everyone according to his ways, according to the merit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. <clears throat> he is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which in the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. 
The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you is a great chasm, is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Today we gather for a very historic moment when in just a few hours our Holy Father will be leaving Vatican City to go to the summer residence Costa Gandolfo and at one o'clock our time his resignation will be in effect and the Sea of Peter or the Cathedral, the cathedral of St. Peter will be vacant and then the cardinals will have to gather in Rome to make a new choice and selection. But what a journey this has been because for 600 years the church has not experienced this and so it's a little unnerving I'm sure for those in the Holy See but also for all of us to see this kind of transition happening. As you look at uh, the Holy Father we can see very clearly in the last couple of years and I had a chance to visit with him very, very briefly at an audience, a general audience, and I did notice that his health was failing. He was becoming more frail at any rate, and I think faced with that, as well as all the great challenges ahead of the church, uh, he, after great and deep prayer, uh, heard the Lord saying to him to take this very important step in his life. And so as we try to understand this, we need to also understand his great care and concern for the church. He's really thinking about the future of the church and the care and concern for the church, and he didn't come upon this decision lightly. Today we gather to thank God for these eight years of his pontificate, for all that he has been able to accomplish, and also to give thanks and praise for his teaching, the body of his teaching, both as Cardinal Ratzinger, as a theologian before that, and in Germany, now as Pope Benedict XVI. He has certainly left us a great legacy of theological reflection on the gospel, on the life of the church, and the conditions of the world today, and the challenge to preach and to live out the gospel in our world today. He was reflecting on the uh, gospel about the transfiguration, you remember when Jesus went with his closest uh, apostles, went up to the Mount of Transfiguration, and there they had an incredible experience of prayer, and Jesus was transformed before their eyes 
by a divine visitation from God the Father, from the prophets. And the Holy Father was reflecting upon that and he wrote, wrote these words and then explained his own choice. Luke the evangelist, he said, places particular attention on the fact that Jesus was transfigured as he prayed. He is a profound experience of relationship with the Father during a type of spiritual retreat that Jesus undergoes on a high mountain in the company of Peter, James, and John, the three disciples who were always present at the moment of the Master's divine manifestation. The Lord, who had foretold his death and resurrection shortly before, offers his disciples an anticipation of his glory. Again at the Transfiguration, as at his baptism, we hear the voice of the Heavenly Father. This is my chosen Son. Listen to him. The presence of Moses and Elijah, who represent the law and the prophets of the Old Covenant, is very important. The entire history of the covenant is directed toward him, the Christ, who brings about a new exodus, not to the promised land as in the time of Moses, but to heaven itself. Peter's exclamation, Master, it is good that we are here, represents the impossible attempt to stop this mystical experience, to hold on to it. St. Augustine comments, Peter, on the mountain, had Christ as the bread of his soul. Should he then depart from there to return to the struggles and sorrows, while up above he was full of the holy love of God, that meditating on this gospel passage, we can draw a very important teaching from it. First of all, the primacy of prayer, without which the entire commitment of ministry and charity is reduced to activism. During Lent, we learn to give the proper time to prayer, both personal and communal, which gives breath to our spiritual life. In addition, prayer is not an isolation from the world and its contradictions, as Peter would have wanted on Mount Tabor. Instead, it consists in continuously scaling down the mountain to meet God and then coming back down, bearing the love and strength drawn from him so as to serve our brothers and sisters with God's own love. Now this is what the Pope says about his own choice on this Sunday that the gospel was read. Quote, I hear this word of God addressed to me in a special way at this moment in my life. The Lord has called me to scale the mountain, to dedicate myself still more to prayer and meditation. But this does not mean abandoning the church. If God asks me this, it is precisely so that I might continue to serve the church with the same dedication and the same love with which I have tried to give her up to now, but in a way more suitable to my age and my strength. Let us call upon the intercession of the Virgin Mary. May she help all of us to always follow the Lord Jesus faithfully in prayer and in works of charity. And so the Holy Father is going to be teaching us really to move from a very active life to a more contemplative life, which is not so filled with activities, but which is deeply concentrate, concentrated on pursuing the Lord in prayer. Our mystical tradition in the church teaches us that even here on earth, we are to anticipate union with God in heaven by the quality of our prayer life and by the quality of our actions in the world. Pope Benedict now is going to concentrate on prayer, on asking for that divine union, which is an anticipation of heaven. He's going to spend time praying, I'm sure, for the new Holy Father, praying for the church throughout the world and praying for the world in general. With a responsibility of over 1.6 million souls throughout the world, I know I can recognize in a very faint way the tremendous challenge that the, this position of the Vicar of Christ and the successor to Peter holds. If we get even a faint glimpse, imagine the tremendous responsibility 
on the shoulders of a man that's now 85 years old. He has had the courage and the humility to say, I love the church, and through prayer, I discern that this is the best way to serve the church in the future. And so we go forward in hope, knowing that the Holy Spirit is with us, that the Holy Spirit will bless all the cardinals gathered in conclave, that they will choose just the right person to be Benedict's successor. Let's pray for them, let's pray for him, and let's pray for the church throughout the world. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Whenever we call to the Lord, he hears our cries for help and he sees our afflictions. Counting on the unfailing care of God the Father, we turn to him now with our petitions. For the continued health and strength of our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, especially at this time of transition, and for the guidance of the Holy Spirit as the Church prepares to choose a new Pope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this year of faith, the Church will recover an exact knowledge of the faith so as to reinvigorate it, purify it, conform it, and confess it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawmakers, that they may have the wisdom and courage to uphold the conscious rights and protect all people from being forced to violate their moral or religious convictions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the lonely, and those most in need, that the Lord in his goodness will be close to them in their trials, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, diaconate, and the church ministry, especially from this parish and throughout our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For strong marriages and family life, and for the protection of all human life from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls of the faithful departed, and especially for Stephanie Komorowski, the intention of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the needs and requests on Cathedral's prayer network, and for our own personal intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All good and gracious God, in your love you accompany us through all the stages of life and provide all that we need. We ask that you hear our prayers, especially our prayer for our Holy Father Benedict, at this time of transition in his life and the life of your church. Bless his comings and goings, provide strength and protection, and continue to be for him wisdom and guide. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, we pray, O Lord, with the offerings presented here in thanksgiving, and govern with unfailing protection your holy church. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those whom you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni Sun Celia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us, us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Tonis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Qui tonis peccata mundi, miserere Tonis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of your Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all of my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Having been made sharers at the heavenly table, we humbly entreat you, Lord. By the power of this mystery, strengthen your church in unity and in charity. And as you have entrusted your pastoral care of the church to Pope Benedict with the office of shepherd, we give you thanks for his many years of outstanding service. Grant him always salvation and protection together with the flock entrusted to his care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our closing hymn is number 479 in the music issue. Come, Holy Ghost, number 479. heavenly hate to fill